How you doing, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 49 of Hockey on the Spot. Sorry I was unable to do this episode yesterday. I'm going to make up for it by doing both episode 49 and episode 50 today. So, <clears throat> got a lot of updates and scores, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Starting with an update on the Calgary Flames. A new captain has been named in Calgary. Defenseman Mark Giordano is going to be the new captain with Mike Camilleri and Curtis Glenn Cross as the alternates. Honestly, in my opinion, there was really no other option as their captain. He is their he is like a leader on this team, and without Jerome McGinley, he basically is the signature leader. So a great move indeed by um, the Calgary Flames staff. Um, very good. Also, Winnipeg Jets have released defenseman Ian White from the professional tryout, which means he will have to find another place for work. Mike Knubel is very close to retiring. Brendan Morrow seems like he's very close to signing with a specific team. Don't know which one. Former Colorado Avalanche and Minnesota Wild defenseman Greg Zanin has signed a pro tryout contract with the American Hockey League San Antonio Rampage, the affiliates of the Florida Panthers. So... He could be getting close to getting into work soon. Teams without a captain. Only four teams are now without a captain. Buffalo Sabres, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, so um, who knows who's going to be the captain for those teams. I can think of some ideas, but I will not go into that tonight, uh, today. Also, big news in the on the Philadelphia front. They have finally gotten Matt Reed signed up, signing him to a four-year contract extension worth $14.5 million, um, and he'll have a $900K cap hit this season as the extension kicks in for the 2014-2015 campaign, which is huge. So he is a big part of that organization for sure. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets are in the short term in need of a backup goaltender. Curtis McElhaney suffered a lower body injury and is expected to miss two weeks. And this could be a big opportunity for someone like Jose Theodore or Johan Hedberg, who was released by the New York Rangers, um, or Ilya Brzgalov or Rick DiPietro to step in as the backup goaltender. And and uh, also in, other, in other news... Um, the Washington Capitals will be officially hosting the 2015 Winter Classic. It has been announced. They are still based, um, looking for an opponent. Lots of rumors surrounding the Philadelphia Flyers to be their opponent, but we'll keep you up po updated on that. And last but not least, defenseman Brett Clark has been released from his professional tryout contract by the um, <laughs> Florida Panthers. So that some big news there. Bunch of waiver, bunch of guys going on waivers today. Um, no one of real note, but um, there are some guys going on waivers today. So um, that's ba all the updates for today. Now let's get to all of the scores, preseason scores from September nineteenth, two thousand thirteen. Starting with the Detroit Red Wings. And the Boston Bruins game at the TD Bank North Garden, a game in which Louis Erickson would make his Boston Bruins day. Or uh, no, excuse me, no, never mind. Um, Louis Erickson would play in the game. Um, I, he, I believe he has already made his Boston Bruins debut, but um, <clears throat> this is his Boston Bruins home debut. That that's for sure. Um, but unfortunately for the Boston Bruins, in his TD. Bank North Garden debut. Not a good ending for the Boston Bruins, even though it is only preseason. 8-2, to two, the final score in favor of the Detroit Red Wings. The Detroit Red Wings getting lots and lots of gold contributions, so let's, let's do it, shall we? Starting with a power play goal by Justin Abdelkader, five minutes into the game, um, assisted by Jakob Kindle and Pavel Datsuk. Then, um... Then after that, David McIntyre would score after that. He's a guy trying to make this roster. Um, he is scored assisted by Luke Glendening and Brian Lashoff. Um, 
Then, in the second period, Henrik Zetterberg would score, assisted by Pavel Datsuk and Jonathan Eriksson. Then, the young def defenseman Danny DeKaiser, who they have a lot of high hopes for, would score, assisted by Jakob Kindl and Joachim Andersson. Then, after that, Dan Cleary, who, as we mentioned, re-signed with the Detroit Red Wings with a number change. He's now 71, not 11. Daniel Alfredson is 11. He scored unassisted. Um, then Henrik Zetterberg would score on the power play from Nicholas Cronwall and Pavel Datsuk. Then Joachim Anderson would score, assisted by Gustav Nyquist and Adam Almquist. And last but not least, Pavel Datsuk would score, assisted by Henrik Zetterberg. All eight Detroit Red Wing goals right there. Jimmy Howard would play the entire game for the Detroit Red Wings. Um... He would let up. Um, he he would let up. He would make 15 saves, and okay, never mind. No, he did not play the whole. Jimmy Howard did not play the whole game. Um, but he he made 15 saves and let up one goal, a 933 save percentage, so good for him. And then Thomas McCollum. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom McCollum would play the other half of the game. He also let up one goal. Don't know exactly how many saves he made, unfortunately. But both guys would play. Um, McCollum playing in the third period. And then for the Boston Bruins, and what was not a good night, they were even lucky to get two goals. Their two goals coming from Jerome McGinley, assisted by Matt Barkowski, and finally Nick Johnson, assisted by Ryan Spooner and Matt Bartkowski. So Bartkowski had a very good game a um, uh, couple nights ago. Malcolm Subban, despite letting up all the goals, played the entire game. He faced 28 shots and only made 20 saves. He let up 8 goals, a 714 save percentage. So not a good night at the TD Bank North Garden. And not a good TD Garden debut for Louis Erickson. Definitely one to forget. So with that being said, let us continue on with the Carolina Hurricanes and the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo at home winning 5-2, to two, a big win for them. Their goal contributions coming from Joel Armia unassisted. Then Johan Larson assisted by Braden McNabb and Billy Leno. Then Cody Hodgson would score, assisted by Thomas Vanek and Joel Armia as part of a third period flurry for the Buffalo Sabres. Then Johan Larson would get his second of the game, assisted by Braden McNabb. And then Braden McNabb would score unassisted. A big night indeed for Braden McNabb, as well as a big night for Ryan Miller, who started the entire game, made 34 saves on 36 shots, a 944 save percentage. So he had a big night even though he was not one of the stars. And then and um and then the Carolina Hurricanes, they actually opened the game in scoring as well as had a 2-1 lead. Zach Boychuk, Boychuk opened the scoring assisted by Patrick Dwyer and Radic Dvorak who if, in case you forgot was invited from the Anaheim Ducks on uh, uh, on a pro tryout contract. And then Chris Terry would score the second goal, also assisted by Radic Dvorak. And Anton Kadobin would start the entire game, making 24 saves on 29 shots and 828 save percentage. So not a good night all round for the Carolina Hurricanes, even though it is only preseason. So congratulations to the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> Next, the New York Islanders and the New Jersey Devils, two division rivals. <coughs> um... And the game took place in New Jersey. Not a good night for the New Jersey Devils, that's for sure. The New York Islanders absolutely dominated this game. The Devils did push for a comeback, but overall it was the New York Islanders' night. Um, they opened the scoring from, with a power play goal, goal by Anders Lee, assisted by Brock Nelson and Ryan Strom. Then, after that, two, count them, two shorthanded goals, both by Josh Bailey both assisted by Kyle Oposo. Kyle Oposo got the lone assist on both goals. Then after that, Eric Bolton, the former New Jersey Devil, would score against his former team, assisted by Anders Lee. 
And then, and then in the third period, Peter Regan, the former Ottawa Senator, would score unassisted. So a big night for the <laughs> New York Islanders. Kevin Poulin would play the entire game with Evgeny Nabokov as his backup. 20 saves on 23 shots and 870 save percentage. So very good night for the New York Islanders. For the New Jersey Devils, <laughs> a night to forget. They did almost, again, they did push for a comeback, but it wasn't good enough. It all began for them with a power play goal by Rostislav Olesh, the former seventh overall pick, a guy fighting to make the team, assisted by Jonathan Merrill and Eric Zelina. Then after that, two goals in the second period by Merrick Zidlitsky, assisted by Bryce Salvador and Travis Zajac. And then Jonathan Merrill would score a goal of his own, assisted by Eric Zelina and Michael Ryder. So not a good night again, and the goaltending didn't really help. Marty Brodor, Mark Tan Brodor, the greatest goaltender of all time, would get his first preseason start, and he did not do well with it. He only faced 13 shots, and he only made nine saves. So he let up four of the Islanders of the five goals against, a 692 save percentage. Not a good night, and looks like Brodor's age could finally be showing. Scott Wedgwood would play the third period. He only had to make four saves, but he let up a goal. He made three saves on four shots, a 750 save percentage. So the tandem in general, not good for the New Jersey Devils. They will have a rematch with the New York Islanders on uh, today, actually, at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York, which will eventually be the new home of the New York Islanders in a couple of seasons. So congrats to the Islanders. For a big night. Next, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Ottawa Senators in Ottawa. A, <laughs> a game that was televised on the NHL Network. The Toronto Maple Leafs coming out on top in Ottawa. Very close game though. 3-2 to two was the final score. Um, <laughs> the Maple Leafs open the... The Maple Leafs goals coming from Nazem Kadri on the power play. Assisted by Mason Raymond, who's on a pro tryout, coming over from the Vancouver Canucks, and Stuart Percy. Then Mason Raymond would score a goal of his own, assisted by James Van Riemsdyk. And then Dave Boland, the, the man who scored the cup-winning goal for the Chicago Blackhawks, would score, assisted by Spencer Abbott and Morgan Riley. So a big night indeed for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, and the goaltending was brilliant as well. Um, the, yes, the goaltending was absolutely brilliant. Drew McIntyre would start the majority of the game. Even He didn't actually start the game. Jonathan Bernier would start the game in the first period. Drew McIntyre would play the remaining two periods. McIntyre was brilliant, making 19 saves on 20 shots, a 950 save percentage. And for Jonathan Bernier in the first period, he made 10 saves on 11 shots, a 909 save percentage. So he was good as well, but McIntyre was better. For the Ottawa Senators, they got some they got some scoring. Um, they did get a couple goals last night. Um, uh, the first goal coming from Frederick Cleason, assisted by Bobby Ryan. And Patrick Weirkosh, the man who they are going to use as their power play quarterback to replace Sergei Gonchar. And then And Andre Peterson, assisted by Patrick Weirkosh, would be their second goal. Um, the goaltending was actually pretty solid in Ottawa. Again, nobody really had a bad night in this game. <laughs> um, Craig Anderson would start most of the night, making 15 saves on 70, 17 shots and 882 save percentage. And then the former New York Islander goaltender, Nathan Lawson, would play the third period, making nine saves on ten shots. He is fighting against a guy like Robin Leonard for the backup position. So well, that'll be a good battle for sure. Next, the Nashville Predators and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Big night for the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa Bay. 5-1 to one win at home. Um, their goals coming from Brett Connolly. The sixth overall pick from 2010, assisted by v Victor Hedman. Then Andre Pallet would score unassisted. Then Steven Stamkos, assisted by Ryan Malone and Luke Witkowski. Then Brett Connolly would get his second of the game, assisted by Victor Hedman and Andre Suster. 
And last but not least, a power play goal by Richard Panic, assisted, assisted by Nikita Kucherov and the former New Jersey Devil defenseman Matt Taormina. Um, so a good night for for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the goaltending, surprisingly enough, was very, very solid. <laughs> um, very solid indeed. Riku Helen Helenius would play the majority of the game, making a perfect 15 saves on 15 shots. He went perfect in that game. And Cedric Desjardins, when he came in, he wasn't half bad either, making 16 saves on 17 shots, a 941 save percentage. So the goaltending was excellent for the Tampa Bay Lightning. For the Nashville Predators, a different story. Only Matt Cullen would score an unassisted goal shorthanded. He would score a shorthanded goal unassisted just 46 seconds into the third period. So um, that is the only positive for them, that it was a shorthanded goal. Um, their goaltending was absolutely terrible. Carter, Carter Hutton would play the majority of the game, making 13 saves on 17 shots, a 7.65 save percentage. And Marek Mazanic, Mazanic would play the third period, making three saves on four shots, a 7.50 save percentage. So... Not a good night all around for the Nashville Predators. Congrats to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Next, the Pittsburgh Penguins play the, Chica the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Chicago Blackhawks in Chicago. Big night for the Pittsburgh Penguins, their first win of the preseason. They, get, get, they got goal contributions from Derek Pouillot on the power play, assisted by Chris Kunitz and Matt Niskanen. Then the fourth line would get it done. Joe Vitale would score to make it 2-1, assisted by Derek Engeland, a tough defenseman, and Dustin Jeffrey, a tough two-way forward. And then Sidney Crosby would finally get it on the board in the preseason, and a goal assisted by Chris Kunitz. So a good night for him. Um, and then for the Chicago Blackhawks, they actually opened up the scoring with Patrick Sharp, assisted by Drew LeBlanc and Ben Smith. Then... To push a comeback, Ben Smith would score a shorthanded goal unassisted. And then the fourth line getting it done for the Chicago Blackhawks, Brandon Bolig would score, assisted by the hard worker Ryan Hartman and Sheldon Brookbank. So tough guys getting it done. In the shootout, only one guy would convert. Bo Bennett of the Pittsburgh Penguins would score the only goal in the shootout. The goaltending for both sides was solid. <laughs> Thomas Vokun would play the entire game for the Pittsburgh Penguins, making 30 saves on 33 shots, a 9.09 save percentage. Nikolai Habibulin would play the entire game for the Chicago Blackhawks, making 27 saves on 30 shots, a 9.00 save percentage. So Nikolai Habibulin in this particular game, showing he still has just a little bit left. And then last but not least, the Minnesota Wild and the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg. Big night for the Wild. 4-1 win. Matt Dumbo would open the scoring, assisted by Michael Granlund and Eric Halla. Next, Charlie Coyle would score from Danny Heatley. Then after that, Christopher Folkholt would score a goal, assisted by Tori Mitchell and Kyle Brodziak. And then a shorthanded empty net goal to top it all off by defenseman Stephen Camper, unassisted. The goaltending was good. Josh Harding would play most of the game, making 16 saves on 17 shots, a 941 save percentage. And Darcy Kemper, who played the third period, went perfect 11 for 11. And for the Winnipeg Jets, their only goal coming from Brian Little, assisted by Andrew Ladd. Uh, Al Montoya played the entire game, making 29 saves on 32 shots, a 906 save percentage. Remember, that last goal was an empty netter. All right, guys, that'll do it for episode 49 of Hockey on the Spot. Next, coming up in just a few minutes, uh, will be episode 50, the preseason scores from last night. So until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. See you guys in a few. Have a good day.